Are you ready? Can crush us. Hey. It don't really get no better than better this. The than. podcast that you're looking for. If you're really heavy in the wrestling, hosted by the mark. Energy that's so amazing. Gotta keep it entertaining. Rep the can crush a nation. Yeah, you know what's going down in the ring. Lights out when you hit a ding ding. ding, ding. Knock them out like boom, bada bing. Hold it down, you can crown me the king. Gotta shout out to the Miz and Duke the dumpster. We choke slamming everybody, power driving. Hit them with a face buster. Yeah, yeah, this the show you need an and it ain't no need for waiting. Mark, hold it down for the can crush a nation. All about wrestling and keep it entertaining. Can crushers wrestling podcast. Time to break them. Let's go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can crushers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can crushers. Let's go. This is Amber Rodriguez, the plague doctor, the mad esthetician, and Can Crushers podcast just got perfect like me. And welcome to another Can Crushers Wrestling Spotlight. I am your host, Mark the Mark Martinez. And yeah, this podcast is going to be perfect, Amber Rodriguez. It really is because it's going to be seductive. It's going to be sexy. We're going to have a lover boy on. We're going to have a dashing young man on. We're going to have the brothers of seduction on. Timothy Flowers and Chris Ringrose. Yeah, man, these two, these two are making waves in pro wrestling. Listen, Brock's Titan Troy. I'm part of the seduction section now. Yeah, I am seductive all the way here on Can Crushers. These guys have won me over from some of the homework I've done. I can't wait to hear the stories they have. I can't wait just to talk wrestling with them. But you know what we have to do first? Yeah, we have to pay the bills. We have to pay the bills and tell you about collar and elbow. Hats, hoodies, tees, all the cool stuff that Al Snow and the Hooligans have at collar and elbow we have a promo code for you that promo code is can crushers all one word crush together capital c and can capital c and crushers you'll save 10 percent off your entire order that's pretty cool you get the amazing cool shirts shad gaspar shirt my favorite the dusty rose shirt my other favorite this the normal property of collar elbow shirt. My other favorite, the Al Snow and the head shirt that has the Macho Man glasses on it. My favorite, of course, I have a lot of favorite shirts from Collar and Elbow. I wear them each and every day. They're awesome. They don't stretch. They're comfortable. They're just great shirts. The ones that I've had from years ago are still brand new. So make sure you check out Collar and Elbow. You'll be happy with the product. So there it is, Al Snow. Again, promo code can crushers saves 10%. Where can you listen to us besides right here where you're listening now? Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Spotify, iHeartRadio. We post it on Facebook so you can listen to it directly off of Facebook. Anywhere podcasts are, that's where you can listen to Can Crushers Wrestling Podcast. Wednesdays is the spotlight. Saturdays, you have our wraparound of wrestling for the week. Me and uh, Sir Michael Jenks wraps up wrestling. We give you our opinions of what's going on. It's a great time, guys. Join Can Crusher Nation. You won't regret it. Join us on our social medias, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Join the discussion. Start a discussion. Bring some stuff to us. Say, hey, Mike and Mark, what are we talking about this week? We'll give you a little bit. But then you give us something back in return. We like that. It's almost time for another Ask Can Crushers. I know you guys like those. I know you guys like those. So start submitting your your questions at cancrushers69 at gmail.com or drop us a DM in any of those socials that we have out there. Guys, I'm ready to get seductive. I'm ready to be the leader of the seduction section right after we hear from Al Snow about collar and elbow, the brothers of seduction. Coming on the show. Wrestling. A love and a passion we all share. I've started a wrestling brand. The wrestling brand. A brand founded on the aspects of wrestling. Two entities working together to create a product that connect emotionally for people everywhere. Collar and Elbow is the brand. Passion and love for wrestling 
is the drive. I am Al Snow, and this is Collar and Elbow, the wrestling brand. This is the hardcore icon, Just Incredible, and you're listening to Can Crusher's podcast. Now, that's not just the coolest, and that's not just the best Can Crusher's podcast. Well, that, my friends, is Just Incredible. And welcome back to Can Crusher's Wrestling Podcast. Guys, you heard how excited I was to have the sexiest, most seductive tag team in wrestling come on the show today, the Brothers of Seduction. Timothy Flowers and Chris Ringrose, guys, how are you doing tonight? I'm feeling great. Feeling I nice, feel feeling sexy. Fantastic. It's been a hot minute it. since I've had a legit and a legit tag team on together. Everybody's kind of been broken up and everything. This is awesome that I have you both on tonight. So a little bit of a different spin and everything. <sighs> We we got to get into the questions, questions first, and then let's just go hog wild because I know you guys want to go off and just tell fans to do some ignorant things. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, it's I already feel something brewing, honestly, and uh, yeah, you know what, Mark, uh, I'll let you take it away. How about that? You're already feeling something brewing. I'm scared. Yeah, I am really scared. <laughs> My hands are shaking. I. You that's know, just because you're on Can Crushers, that's all. You, the, the hype of being on Can Crushers is it. Yeah. The pressure doesn't get to me. The pressure doesn't get to me or Chris. You know, like, our first our first match was a main event match for the Tag Team Champion against people that have been on this podcast and Brock's Boulder and Titan Troy. And we put up a hell of a good fight seeing how we're not Tag Team Champions. Now, it... You know, it kind of is a bear of how we are now. You know, I, I feel like it could have been a lot better. But I'll let you digress, Mark. I sorry, I'm sorry for cutting you. No, off. no, no, no. But I, we always say, especially in wrestling, I mean, you guys are still making money. The money's in the chase. Those titles will be yours in time. Oh, for sure. Oh, it's just a matter of time for us. Yeah, it is. Brock and Titan have nothing on you two. They're two I, single wrestlers. I like you. I I like you. You uh, got the right opinions here. Yeah. I mean, you guys are a tag team. You, you've you been there together through the thick and the thin. Listen, Titan is like Brox's lackey. I, I That's what agree. we've been saying. I completely agree. We've been saying that since the beginning. Oh, thank you. I need to go on his podcast first, though. So let me throw you under the bus there. Okay. What the hell is all that about? Hey, he just he jumped to the invita- invitation quicker. That was it. Yeah, you know. That was he, it. Uh, he he looked at us one day and he goes, "Hey, um, I need views." <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. We have the second highest viewed podcast that his show has ever put out, and why is because we're the sexiest most seductive, the prettiest tag team that FTC and the Art of Grappling have to offer. We've had less matches than everybody there, and we're already the one of the top draws. Exactly. Already. already. You guys know. You guys know. But let's let's do the rewind, because I do like these stories, because everybody has a little bit of a, a crazy story, uh, and you guys can bounce back and forth. Who introduced each one of you to professional wrestling? Because I know it's always a fun story that – Hey, my gr- my grandma did, or my aunt did, or you know, somebody random introduces everybody to wrestling. Who was it? Well, I have an interesting story for that. Uh, it was actually a, my middle school math teacher in <laughs> in sixth okay, grade. You win. Uh, <laughs> so he was he was always he's been a fan of wrestling forever at that point. So uh, when we were doing busy work in math class, uh, once. While we were doing the work, he would put on Royal Rumbles up on the projector. And that's how I kind of discovered that. I was, I was like, whoa, what is this? Hold on. This is cool. And then this was around network time, so eventually I would just pick up the network and started watching wrestling, and that took off from there. And then I, I feel like I really became more of an outside fan of wrestling around 2017 when New Japan started to blow up in the States. And then that's where it – and then from there I've just been watching everything that I could possibly watch. 
And that's so it. That's let me let me jump in real quick, uh, Tim, and, and say, Chris, the first ever thing you saw was a Royal Rumble. Yeah, it was Royal Rumble 2010. I remember. Damn, it was that's, a good the, Rumble. that's my favorite match. You call it a specialty match. You call it whatever. The Royal Rumble is my number one pay per view, or whatever the hell you call it nowadays, premium live event, or whatever, mm-hmm. uh, of all time. So that's a great introduction to wrestling. It's it's an excellent introduction because well, for, like. You just see everybody. You see all these different people. It's 30 different people that you're seeing, and you're like – you immediately kind of pick your favorites. And 2010, I think CM Punk had his thing in that. Yeah. And that, that was a big one. Then Edge, and obviously, and I that, those guys I gravitated towards in that Rumble, and I just like kind of formed my wrestling opinions from there forever after we'll that get, one match. We'll get to that, I'm sure. I already feel that you were – you may be quiet in the ring or you may be quiet – a training or something, but I don't think you're going to be quiet on the show. I think you're going to be very vocal. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Once Tim? he starts talking, he doesn't shut up. <laughs> it's true. What was your introduction? Well, um, my introduction was, um, I was, I was maybe six or seven months old and it's just, I was crying a lot and my family had Monday Night Raw on. They just sat me in front of the TV, and I just shut up. And they they told me the match that was exactly there. It was, I believe, it was the Hardy Boys. And uh, so, I mean, that, I think that's what, like, started my whole love of tag team wrestling and whatnot. But, you know, I just – I sat and watched wrestling for my entire life. And, you know, I – At three or four, I lived, breathed it. You know, I went to all the little shows that started popping up all all over uh, my region of West Virginia. Um, It was mostly I had a ton of action figures. I had uh, a huge, like, tote full of them. Like a big Uppermade tote? Yeah, Yeah. a huge one. I still have it. It's it's currently in my closet. But... I do two of mine and from the eighties, so that's okay. <laughs> I have some from the eighties. But the LJ the LJNs are still my favorite all, all I, time. I will agree with that. They they just I, they hit different. They, yeah. I think they really hit different. But <laughs> I started going to a lot more local shows when I hit like seven or eight because it was just right down the road. I I could walk across the street and I'll be like, Oh hey, there's a little show here and I'll go see it and it's where I first saw Ricky Morton and uh, it's a bad time. For, I'm so sorry that I forgot his name. I Robert, Robert Gibson. Gibson. Robert, Robert Gibson. Gibson. Wow. I'm, I feel horrible for that. You should. Um, that is one of the greatest tag teams. Yeah. And here I, here I am saying that I love tag team wrestling and I can't name the other half of the Rock and Roll Express. Man. But, yeah, I just gravitated towards wrestling my entire life. And it's just. It's been a coping mechanism for me. It's it's definitely made me the person that I am in the long run. But so tag team for you, Chris. How about you? Were you instantly because you saw the Royal Rumble first? And I'm going to beat that to a dead horse. You didn't see a lot of tag team right off the bat, especially if math teacher buddy was continuously showing Royal Rumbles. <laughs> you went CM Punk and Edge right off the bat. How how well, does that go? Well, with the edge and stuff like that, I did, I did kind of, through the path line of Royal Rumbles, I somehow ended up on like TLCs and the classic, the Ed, much like him, the edge, the Hardy Boys, Edge and Christian, the Hardy Boys, the Bubba's, you know, yep. all those guys. And then it just kind of, obviously, I don't know who, who my favorite tag team is now I'm thinking about. It. I, that was, you're reading my notes and you can't even see them. That was just <laughs> to say, both of you, who is, who's your favorite I'm gonna throw it three ways, actually. Who's your your old school favorite tag team? Because I know you guys have done a lot of tape studies. So you mm-hmm. brought up the Rock and Roll Express, and I, listen, I'm throwing the Hardys in there as old school now because the, the, yeah, it's done. Um, but that's just my opinion. Uh, old school and like new school. Who who are your favorite tag teams right now? That's uh, I will. I have a few off the top of my head. I'll, I'll let Chris. Uh, think his out, but I'll, I'll go ahead and name off mine. Um, there's the Fantastics. They're, they're they absolutely great. 
they don't get enough love. They don't. They are fantastic. Uh, there's the Freebirds, obviously. I, I love the Freebirds. I aspire to be Terry Gordy in the sense I'm kind of a big man. It's just nobody, he, Terry Gordy doesn't get enough love himself. Uh, agreed. The uh, the Eliminators, ECW. We, we were just talking about the Eliminators. Yeah, we, we were talking about them. Uh, new School, I will definitely say. Um, there's Aussie Open. Just Ooh. hard-hitting tag team. Absolutely phenomenal uh, phenomenal matches. You know, like, just fantastic. Just all the way through. Uh, and I... I I really don't know. There's there's just too many tag teams now that just don't get enough love, and there's a ton of tag teams back in the day that don't get enough love. Agreed. Agreed. Mm-hmm. Uh, for Chris answers, WWE is struggling with tag teams right now. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm sure you, you've picked New Japan, maybe something to cross over to AEW, and some that are still lingering. WWE's tag team situation is blah. Back in the day yeah. when it was the Bulldogs and Hart Foundation and Demolition yeah. and all those guys, that was the greatest tag team era. Because even in NWA, you still had the Midnight Express, Rock and Express, and all those still going head to head. That was the greatest time. It, it has been a couple years now in the making. AEW is really showcasing tag teams. So yeah, Chris, go ahead. Who are some of your favorites? Well, old school. I'm kind of. I'm kind of baby. I like the Road Warriors. I like Edge and Christian. I, I really liked Edge and Christian back in the day. They were some of my. It always comes back to Edge. I've talked about Edge a lot. It really this. does. I, I, I get I, that. Well, yeah, Edge and Christian, and then kind of the mid 2000s where I, I, I liked TNA tag teams a lot. So Beer Money, Motor City Machine Guns. I love Motor City Machine Guns so much. And then yeah, modern tag teams. FTR is just they're great. Uh, Briscoes, rest in peace. You know. It's just those guys were like the tag teams for me in the modern day. You know, they just had their classics the other year. It they, was amazing. They really did. the The dog collar match between FDR and the Briscoes. Again, rest in peace. I I don't know if we're gonna top that tag team match in the next twenty years. I I, I don't care. It's hard. It's oh, also New Day. I had to bring up the New Day. Oh, of course. Yeah. yeah. They're really not – I mean, n- nothing that because they're injured or anything like that right now, but they're more of a spectacle than a, a tag team anymore. Yeah. They yeah. They're just the whole freaking show. They're just they're just so great, every one of them. Yeah. I, 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 I've been – this is kind of off topic of tag teams, but I think Xavier Woods just needs to win the title at some point. I want him to at win the title point. more than anybody because I think he's just – I think they're all so good and they're all deserving of it, and they all, he's the only one that needs it. So. Yeah, he is. So you guys all find wrestling at a young age and everything. You watch it all through. But what what did you guys do? Because I know you're both going to say, I knew I was going to wrestle at the age of three or six months or whatever. But how did you get there? What did you do in high school? Did you – because I always say we had that path in in high school, have it be somewhere in sports or – I'm a drama kid. That's why I like the mic. I, I understand all of that. What did you guys do in high school to kind of get ready to transition into wrestling? Uh, do you want to take it, Tim, or I can go first? It doesn't matter. Uh, it's up to you. Okay. Honestly. So, well, I'll go. I'll go. I like talking. Um, so, for me, it was high school wrestling. That's what I did. I did amateur wrestling in high school, all four years of high school. Uh, I was really, I, I, I knew it wasn't pro wrestling, but it was something I was like, I want to try this. I want to do this. And it, in the back of my mind, pro wrestling was always there. And then, and I was really proud of that time well, as a team, because it went from a very small program and like me and a couple other guys who kind of led that to being a much more populated pro, populated program. And it was, it was a really good time and we were all very successful. Now it's a very successful program. And then, from there, it just became like just one day I was just like, I want to seriously look into pro wrestling companies, what I want to do to train. And I stumbled upon FTC and I can't. And then I was like, I'm doing that. It was just kind of like on, on a whim. I was just like, you know what? I, no more thinking about it. I'm going to do it. And then I went and did it. Now I'm here. During your amateur days, because listen, um, I had a singlet when I was in J.O. wrestling. I don't know what they call it around you guys. It was like Junior Olympic. I put Macho Mark on the back of my singlet. 
<laughs> yeah. I, I was more like a Malky or um, somebody that lost all, you know, I, I hate the word jobber. Maybe like Al Snow. I'll put, uh, there you go. Hi, Al, if you're listening. I was more <laughs> part of the job squad wearing Macho Mark on my singlet. <laughs> I felt like I was, you know, 10 foot tall and bulletproof because I knew at some point I was going to get into the business and this little kick in my ass. Listen, I really sucked, guys. I, I, I never <laughs> say this on, on air. I, this is the first time I think I brought it up. I sucked. I was a big fat kid that once I was down, I was down. So, <laughs> but I was pumped. I was there. I was getting into my wrestling shape. So, yeah. Yeah. Tim, how about you? Well, you know, I, I have a similar background to Chris. I, uh, wrestled all throughout middle and high school and here or there I took jujitsu classes, but I just, it was always in the back of my mind. Um, it was just, I, I think he copied my story word for word, <laughs> you know, like I was just, I was laying in bed one day and I, I can't remember. It was like midnight, 1am and I was just looking through wrestling schools and I was like, huh, I wonder if, if I text these people and these people, cause I, where I had been to a ton of wrestling shows locally, I had gotten to know all the wrestlers and all the workers very, very personally. Like I had a few that were actually related to me family wise. So, I mean, I just started talking to them and they go, they just kept pushing me down the line, pushing me down the line until FTC and AOG came along and started talking to them and well, they just basically took me with open arms and, and now it's a family. yeah. And, and now it's a family a hundred percent. So everybody knows we talked to Brox and Titan and Sarah and everybody. And I, I want to get this from you guys too. I want you to give, because Bobby blaze doesn't get enough love. I, I will throw this out there. He doesn't yeah. get enough love from his days in NWA, WCW, and all that, to to now, everybody's like, oh, but this now resurgence with you guys, I'm going to say the whole, you know, AOG, FTC, all of that, you're bringing his name back up, and he's getting that pat on the back that he deserves. Yes. So individually, again, talk about what Bobby and your other trainers have done for you, because without them, and we're a strong component of this on Can Crushers, that without them, well, you're not on the show today, and you didn't have a first match yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, I truly believe if Bobby wasn't training me, I would be nowhere near ready to wrestle where I am, even by this point, because I've been in about training for about a year. And I don't think if, if Bobby was not training me, if other FTC guys weren't training me, it I don't, I don't know where I'd be wrestling. Those guys are amazing, of and they course. know everything. And they're just – I, I admittedly I didn't know much about Bobby going into FTC, but I looked him up and I was like, man, this this man is incredible, and he definitely should have had more of a name than he ever did. But he really, mm-hmm. it, I just I respect him so much. I respect him for, I mean, he had his his last match recently, went out and it was amazing. I was up in the rafters screaming as well. My, it was my head fantastic. Off. It was amazing. I just so much. Again, I would not be anywhere near where I am right now if it wasn't for him. Uh, I 100% agree. I mean, Bobby pushed both of us to be what we are in the long run. I like us being, like, as a tag team, he's pushed us to where he thinks that we need to be, and he's going to push us beyond that. He wants to push us to 11. We're at eight. You know, he, he wants us to be as good as the tag teams that we've mentioned. He wants us to be exactly. just the new, the new breed almost, you know, like we, yeah. we need to, I hate to say that local professional wrestling died out within the past three to five years, but I, it's definitely been on a decline, and I feel like with the resurgence of local promotions coming out and new talent coming in, young people like me and Chris, I hate to pat ourselves, like pat both of us no, on the back. You pat you yourself should. on the back. Yeah. Come on, what a 
sexiest tag team in wrestling. Though. Exactly. Which he does. Yeah. No, you have to. Tim, you you have to pat yourself on the back because that pat on your back also pats Bobby on the back. And listen, you know, both young into the business. So first step is to take over uh, FTC and all of that and your your locals. Um, I'm just going to skip all over the place because it's just my the way I do most of the stuff. Um, Bobby wants to see you guys on dark soon. I mean, it's, it's real life. You know, he, he mm-hmm. wants you on dark. He knows the baby steps that once you get on dark, then you get to go there and there and there and there. It just opens doors. And with somebody like Bobby in your back pocket, it's very feasible real quick. Yes. Yeah. A hundred percent. So let's talk a little bit about training and because these are where the stories really come out. Uh, as you walk into training for your first day, did you get that? Oh my God feeling. What am I doing here? Or this is, this is a lot. And then tell me how you felt after the first day of training. You're like, shit, I'm never going back there again. That beats the shit out of me. <laughs> uh, first day I walk in and it, Bobby, I remember it was just Bobby was sitting outside. He's like, who are you? <laughs> I walked in. I was like, I'm here for wrestling. He's like, well, get in there. And I, it was just, they threw me right in and just that feeling of getting in the ring for the first time and just looking and like, Oh, like, Holy shit. It's me. I'm, I'm in the ring, not just watching someone in that ring. It's just like, it's a feeling that you just can't, it's a special moment that in my life that I'm, you can't recreate, you know? Yeah. And then after, afterwards, I was like, damn, this is, this is hard. <laughs> but, I'm sore as hell. <laughs> I'm sore as hell, but at the same time, I don't want to stop doing it. I want to come back. I want to do it again and again and again every day. And it's that good sore. It's it the good, good sore. The, the youthful good sore that yeah. very, it goes away very quick. It's, <laughs> it's, wrestling is poison to my brain because it's just, no matter what I'm doing, no matter, how important it could be to anything else. It's just like, it's always on the brain. I'm always thinking of things. I'm always thinking of what I want to do. And it's just constant. I always want to be back in there doing stuff. Some say wrestling and I will advocate for this is a sickness. Once you're in, you're in, that's all you think about. Like I'm on the yeah. back of the garbage truck. We, we, I'm like, all right, I know I have this, this, this coming up on the show, and then, but wait, I have to ring announce here. And I'm just thinking, like, how I'm going to turn my, you know, announcer persona into something else, and I'm forgetting to do stuff at work because wrestling is the only thing that matters. My my wife will say, will you take a break because your son is getting his driver's license? You want to be part of that? I, unless he's got a wrestling match in the back of that car. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah. So did it's, you have kind of the same kind of feeling on that first day? Um yeah, a little bit. I I did I do remember the day pretty well. I uh, I showed up like maybe 15 to 20 minutes late because we were we were looking for <laughs> the place. Hustler. You're that guy. Big well, I mean, on the first day. <laughs> I mean, what had happened is we we looked at the directions and well the address that was on the Facebook page and I was like okay I'm gonna go there so we went there and it was at the old school and I'm like I have no clue we're in like oh, yeah. a, we, we're in like a dingy like uh, like <laughs> like a loading dock and I'm like I don't think this is the right place we we had just moved schools I was there it I showed up fresh. right at the end of the old school and then he showed up right at the beginning of the new school so we I get there 20 minutes late and they're like Oh, so you're the guy who we've been talking to. Okay. Mm-hmm. Get your shoes on. Get in the ring. Do you know the bump? Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, not like that, but like it, it, it had a similar tone to it. Um, it was just like. They throw you in. They I, they throw you in, but with open arms. They, they're they ready to catch you if you fall, you know, yeah. like it's it's definitely one of those things. It's like. I don't think I'm ready for it. And then you get in there and they're like, um, maybe, maybe I'm ready for it. And then you leave the next, like leave after like three or four hours and you're like, maybe, maybe I'm not ready for it. Maybe, <laughs> maybe my knees have a, ve- a better outlook than I do, you know, like, 
just blow my knee out every time I stand up. But for real, have you been on a DL already? I'm not. No. Well, no, I haven't. I haven't been on the injured list, but I've definitely. I've just maybe should have been. I there's times where I was just. Ironically, I'll explain to you how I hurt my knee the last time. This is completely off topic. I slid into the ring. That's all I did is I slid into the ring what and the the pad, like the ring mat just was a little bit off. And I smashed my knee right on the metal and proceeded to work the rest of a gauntlet match. Dang. So it was just like. You did good in the gauntlet match. I did do good in the gauntlet match. But it was. It, Th- then we decided to do a two out of three falls tag team match the next day. So it was just like, got to love that, you know, <laughs> you bent in half. <laughs> so for both of you guys, what was the hardest thing to, because listen, you both have wrestling in your background. You're both uber young that, you know, the bumps and the bruises can, can bounce back. You understand that. What was the hardest thing for both of you to grab? Because listen, I had to run the ropes and that, sucks it really does if you do it wrong um were the ropes horrible uh, is a mental you know the whole putting the match together w- what was your roughest thing to concept for me and i think this is still partially an issue for me is expression expressing myself in that ring a bit more uh i i there's i've had obviously technical stuff and like there's there was issues there but i feel like it's my, how my emotions are portrayed in the ring and how I'm doing it, that's where it, I have the most struggle currently for me is selling and stuff like that and those kind of things with my face and everything. Like that. Uh, yeah, I, I do have a few like of the similar things. I It's mostly technical for me because I I see it as – like, Chris is definitely the Rob Van Dam to my rhino, you know, like, so much so that he does use the Rolling Thunder. I mean, it, it's, it, it's, it's one of those things, you know, but like, I, with chain wrestling, I, I, I'll put in a headlock a little wrong and I'm just like, damn, you know, like, I, I knew that I messed it up. And then I'll, let's see, I, it's just a lot of things that I can't get through my head that I've seen so many times, it's but like easy things that yeah are forgotten. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's like, I, I run the ropes a little differently. Uh, some call it like the Lucha style. I'll put my hand on the middle rope and the hand on the top rope. It, they say you could do it, but I mean, it's just, it's going to be a pain in the ass to forget it, you know, like, mm-hmm. Depends on who you are, but I think that's just a style thing. But um, that and I do have a really bad problem with, like, putting matches together in the sense of I I need to figure out psychology a little more, too. Uh, I, I think it's mostly that because I, I think that – I need to get this, this, and this done within a very short amount of time. But that short amount of time just got blasted down to say, if I need it done in three minutes, I'll do it in 30 seconds. Procrastination. Yeah. Procrastination. It's, mm-hmm. I, I have all that time to work it out. Like if I need three big moves, I can do it in 15 seconds. And then I'm like, well, what do I do now? You know, like I, it, it's the dead air. The dead air and radio, getting, and getting ahead of myself, you know, it's this, it, it's this mostly that. It goes back to the selling, you know. If you're going to do mm-hmm. a power bomb, sell it for thirty seconds because it's, you know, look look at Wardlow, he'll do mm-hmm. a power bomb and then he does that symphony and listen, that's that could be construed as dead air, but he's just making a mockery of himself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if you're just grabbing power bomb and then big knee and then and then you're like. Oh crap! We got seven minutes left in this match. What are we yeah. going to do? Yeah, I'm just work heat, I guess. There you go. <laughs> well, beat him up more. That's all you got to so, do. How did you guys? This is this is where we come together now. When did you guys become the sexiest, most seductive team in, in professional wrestling? <laughs> how did the brothers of production start? 
you know, one was there a little bit ahead of time. Did you guys gel right off the bat as you walked in? Or some of the best teams <laughs> are put together years down the line. And by the way, you said Rhino to RBD. You should have wrapped back around and said you're the Robert Gibson to his Ricky Morton. Just to show okay. his name. Okay. You know, that should have been a good callback. Yeah. Or, <laughs> yeah. I'd say, well, yeah, we immediately gelled. We immediately mm-hmm. connected really quickly after he showed up. We we just we share a lot of common interests. Is the first the first thing we connected about. We got a dog yelling in the background over there, but oh, that was that was a motorcycle. God, oh oh, oh my god, well it was through your yeah. house apparently. Yeah, yeah, we immediately connected. It just we bonded really quickly. We became friends really quickly. Things shared interest was immediate, and then shared shared love of rest like shared similar loves in wrestling, it immediately came to mind. And then the Brothers of Seduction started, uh, because <laughs> well, there's a story here, so spit it out. This is not PG. Do you, do you want me to? Do you want me to say it, Chris? I'll get it out of the way. You tell us. I think you tell the story better than me. So it was a night we were. Um, well, do you want me to break kayfabe? I can break kayfabe. Are you? Uh, I'll put it this way because sometimes we, we've been good so far. Um, I'm all right with whatever, but don't get yourself in trouble. Like if Bobby's going to jump on you, don't. It, Bobby won't. I, I, I I'll say it like this. So we were at a student's uh, bonfire after a show, and we were just sitting there hanging out and. Somebody who was a little bit intoxicated. These are the looks, best stories. Looks it's across the, people on can crushers. Looks across the fl- looks across the flame, and me and Chris are standing there. And he goes, "Stand closer together, real quick." <laughs> I go, "Why?" He goes, "Take your hair down." So he, I took my hair down, and he goes, "Are you two brothers?" I go, "What?" He goes. Are you two brothers? You look exactly alike. I go, no, we don't. <laughs> no, we don't. And it was for the rest of the night. It was like 11 o'clock. It was up until like maybe 3 a.m. of him just going, you two look like brothers. And everybody else is like, just finally just giving up and just going, yeah, you two look like brothers. And out of nowhere, he goes, the brothers of seduction. I mean. I was like, that's good. Perfect. Yeah. I was like, I was like, that's good. Really? Good. We are the sexiest. Then we are. Like, like we kind of already knew that before even the bonfire. Like it was. We it was, already knew. Listen, I'm 275 pounds of pure love and seduction, and I'm mm-hmm. just. I knew it all along. It, it takes that outside influence. Just to give a little bit of tweet, in wrestling or out of wrestling, just somebody to help with a character development. And, and then look, look at you two sexy ass bastards right now. Exactly. You know it. You know it. So you guys have brought up that you share. We're going to take a day off of wrestling. You don't. You don't train. There's nothing going on. You're forgetting wrestling, and it's hard to do. You're forgetting wrestling mm-hmm. is around. What are some nerd out things that you guys do? Uh, you guys, you clearly hang out together a lot. I, I see that. I can tell it already. Like, we need to hang out more. Yeah, we do need to hang out more. Uh, We've been honestly. busy. Yeah. I mean, I've been school. School's been my thing. You've been cool. working. Cool. Cool. I, yeah. I know. I know. Look at, look at us, Mark, working blue I'm, collar jobs. Right? Look at God. us. God. Look at this freaking Not scholar over be, here. Too sexy to be in school. I don't <laughs> enjoy uh or either one of you video games guys music you video know games. i'm both of us yeah uh i i work a lot i just genuinely just i i that's why I, I think uh, yeah i mean i have i have like three hobbies and two one of them consumes wrestling the other one music and the other one video games you know i'm just yeah pretty similar in the in those ways i just i'm I work. It's it just if I'm not at home after work, I'm at work or I'm at training. So it's it's, it's a wrestler's life. It really it's is. Yeah. 
So how many matches together do you guys have under your belt? Uh, how many are we at now? What, uh, like combined? Yeah. Combined? I think, what, Chris, you have two singles, right? Yeah. You have two singles. You have our te- our first match. Um, there was... Yeah, it's like somewhere like 15 to 20, I think. Yeah, 15 to 20 in total. That's I had good. to take a guess. For For being... Essentially, first year of wrestling. You, you have that training that you're in wrestling, but you really don't count it for matches. Da, 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 da. So, first year, that, that's great. That, that really is. Yes. And then, you know, essentially, listen, you got that first match battling Brocks and, and Titan out of the way. You're going to continue to beat on them for a while because they're bums. Um, exactly. What are your What are your goals here in, in 2023? Before we get some of the harder uh, questions, that I love to ask. Well, firstly, win the titles, of course. Yeah. Very obvious. Then, after I win the titles, I just want to beat up Brox and Troy more as much as yeah. I possibly can. Those guys are bums, like you honestly, said. Honestly, honestly, I don't care if we have the titles, anyways. I just like beating them up. Well, I, it's it's it, mostly it's nice to beat them up with the titles. That you know, I never thought of that. I never I, thought of it. And then also. This may be more towards the end of the year, but I want to I want to work maybe some promotions outside of FTC, just some more local, different promotions, and see where we can get some a more exposure out there. You know, get a get a bigger footprint of the seductive. We need seductive section. Is that can we can we get a seductive Ooh. section going? Or seductive something? section. We have an inside joke of the seduction world order. It's 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 going to run wild one day. Yeah, it's an ever growing group. There's like 45 people in it, all art, all alternating. It's, it, it's just one of those things, you know. But I, I agree with uh, Chris, and I, I would like to expand more. Um, let's see. There's uh, there's one thing that I would like to get out of the way, Chris. Sorry, I know this is a tag team podcast here, but there is a, there's the. AOG Championship held by somebody at the school, Caleb Throne. Don't know if he's been on the podcast or not, but I'm sure that not he should. I <laughs> I'll jinx it, but I I would like a chance at it. Honestly, I feel like I mean, look at me, look at him. He's a freak that wears face paint. I don't need makeup or anything to look pretty, seductive, sexy. It's fantastic. I don't need to throw myself off of the top rope like a maniac. I don't need to jump off of anything, to be fair. The only thing that I need to hit is a Vader bomb, and I'll go home. I'll go home with the title. I'll let you know my first match was a singles match for the FTC title, not the AOG title, the FTC title. And it may not win my way, but for a first match, who else can say they were competing for the biggest title in the promotion right off the bat? The first right match? Off. First match. Yeah. That sounds like you have a little in in the booking. Like, can I call you out on that? <laughs> First match? Come on. I can't say any more than what I said here, but first match. And then my second match for the tag titles with right. him over here. Right. First to uh, strap on to, Tim. You know, this guy's going to keep getting title matches for – Listen, That's what I I'm, said. I'm on your side, but for doing I'm, nothing to start, you're just here's a title match. Here's a title match. I'm, I'm, I'm destined for titles. I don't. Little John Cena over here. <laughs> that that oh, gauntlet God. match that we were in, we were both in a gauntlet match. It was for the number one contendership to the AOG <laughs> championship. And I will say, what happened between me and Chris was an accident. Uh, little, he left had his, a little mishap. Little mishap. He, yeah. he left his jacket in the ring, and I got counted out. That was completely an accident. I went back to get it. The ref got it's. We don't it's a long story. It's a and long story. I, I do got to talk about this. Psych <laughs> ward immediately after. Well, the next person in the gauntlet match, he comes in, bites my hand, bites it, and you know what? Not a DQ. Not even a five count. No DQ. No nothing. Of course I. <laughs> Of course I wasn't going to – how was I supposed to do anything when he was biting my hand? Illegal. You did submit to it. I told, yeah, because he's doing illegal stuff. 
No tension here. No tension. There, no, 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 not at all. I, I, bl- I blame. I blame the ref. I blame well, Mike Point Dexter, the referee. Blame. Referees. Ugh. You know, you can't have wrestling with them, and you don't want them around. No. So you guys, like I said, wrestling for about a year. So you guys have been through some ins and outs, some locker rooms and stuff. In wrestling, even across the board, from when I was a little guy and you guys were nowhere to be found to now, there's a stigma with wrestling that, you know, sometimes it's dirty. Sometimes there's schmucks in the locker room, da 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 da, da. You know all of them. If you could eliminate one right now just to make wrestling better for the talent, the promoters, the ring announcers, the fans, because what would you uh, eliminate from it? Ooh, that's a tough question. Um, I'll take this one. Uh, I'll take this one first. Sorry, Chris. I didn't mean to cut you off. I just completely no, blanked out for a minute. Um, <laughs> I heard it. I was listening to it. I got the question. It's just, I said I'd take it and then it went with it. But, um, there's a, a politics. It mostly just if, like, um, say, if you're in with the Booker, I just if you if you have a title match every week and you're getting paid more than everybody, you know I just, I don't know if that's just me where I'm so new in the locker room or whatnot, or I'm just a just a freak like that. I just I don't know if it's just like you can't talk to me like that because I'm the Booker's friend, you know. I just yeah. That that's actually been brought up a lot recently. So I, I think maybe politics have made their way around a little bit more this year. Maybe that's at the tail end of last year because of that same thing. Uh, a lot of the talent that come on the show is, is saying politics is kind of stepping up a little bit, and that's that's one of the big things that just needs to stop. Because listen, you two are there, and as much as I'm throwing heat at Brox and Titan or Sarah or anybody. Everybody's there to make us fans forget reality for a while. It's a freaking show. Yeah. Where you're you're there to win championships and all of that, yes, but you're there to have fun and put on a great show for the fans. It, it's essentially it, it, it what it is, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and if you have one person politicking to get title shots all the time, da 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 da. Listen, uh, us fans get sick of it too. So yeah. Chris, what's yours? Ego. Yeah. Thinking you're better than you are. Now, me and my brother, we are good. So we, we can't, we. Yeah. I mean, tag team, so we, we have room to talk, but there's some guys out there. They think they're better than they are and they talk a big game, but that's all it is, is just talking. You know what I'm saying? They can talk the talk. They can't walk the walk. Exactly. Nice. I, I like to know before we actually just talk wrestling for a little bit about what we like that's going on and everything. I, I would like to get the the dream matches that you guys would like to have, and let's do some local ones. You know, we, we've said we want to see you guys beat up Brock's and Titan again. Who else in, in in and around your organization that you'd like to grab? But then let's go and say, hey, do you want to take the Hardys are out there? The Hardys are out there. Uh, do you want to take on the Hardys? Do you want? Maybe the Dudleys come back for another show. Heath and uh, Rhino. Rock and Roll Express is hanging it up, Tim. So it, it, yeah. it's got to be quick. Yeah. Um, locally, there's a uh, there's a trio. Uh, there's a SRO, uh, Seth Martin, Noah Ray, and um, Shane Storm. He's the all three of those guys are some of the greatest that this that the tri state has seen. Um, Seth Martin is a phenomenal worker. Uh, Shane Storm is just, he's, he's trained by Bobby Blaze. He, he knows what he's doing. He's just, he's fantastic. Noah Ray, Noah Ray is, I think, one of the best big men in the tri state right now. He's a humongous guy. All love to him. But I, I feel like I, I, I think I could, 100% 100% take him in, in a match, of course, but um, okay. yeah, it, locally that. Um, let's see. I think I would like to work a match with uh, Dirty Dogs, uh, Dolphin oh, yeah. Bobby. 
absolutely fantastic heels in their respective categories, both humongous, humongous parts to the wrestling business today. Um, Bobby just being a fantastic worker in everywhere that he's been. Dolph being a team player in WWE for as long as I've been alive. You know, it's they're they're both great. Yeah. Same question, Chris. Locally, I'm more on the singles match side for local guys, and a lot of it is still within FTC. I'd like to have a match with Caleb Throne. Obviously, I want the title. Secondly. If you guys just see with him, this idiot throwing his hands up in the air and like, fuck this. Well, I, I want the title too, Tim. Okay. I want it first, Chris, but go ahead. Whatever. We're co-champs when we win it. It doesn't matter. Free bird rule. Free bird rule. Free bird rule. Exactly. Secondly, I think we both have a bit of a crazy side. And I think we do some crazy stuff in there. And I want to do some crazy things in that ring. So that's that's another thing. Secondly, I want to have a match with Jordan Carlisle. I've always vibed with that guy a lot. <laughs> I love that guy. And I just I just I just want to wrestle him. There's not really much to it. I just want to wrestle him and see Yeah, you know. I'll second yeah, that. I'll second And then that. obviously singles matches against Brocks and Troy and then just beat them up more cuz I, I love beating those guys up. Uh for out a little bit more on the outside. Ugh, there's too many. There's too many. Too many good people to out there to rest. Uh F T R is that just just do, they're just it's good answer. Love, they're so, they're so the great content right now. They're they're yeah. they're the team. Out they're there. the tag team, exactly. And it's just like I'm at, imagine just testing your testing your abilities against those guys. And Aussie Open, as Tim mentioned earlier, those are also one of my favorite tag teams out there right now. And yeah, that's bad. For those guys, that'd be the big ones. So storylines, what do you guys like that's going on in wrestling? And how much of the big the big shows, you know, Impact and AEW and WWE, throw in NWA and all that, how much do you get to watch and enjoy? Because we're all fans before we get into the business. How much can you enjoy wrestling right now? Can you shut off your brain and say, man, this was a great match? Or are you picking it apart going, oh, Dax, you, you kind of messed up a little bit. And if you're calling out Dax, you should probably get punched in the face. <laughs> but you, I, that was just on my head. Um, so how much can you enjoy it? How much do you rip it apart? And how much do you watch, essentially? Uh, I watch quite a bit. I try to keep up with what happening WWE, AEW, ROH, by extension, and New Japan is probably the biggest one for me. I'm a big New Japan fan. Uh, I like Japanese wrestling in total. But the one I consistently watch is New Japan. Um, it's I think re- doing wrestling has made me enjoy wrestling more. I know some people might say that's wow. An interesting I've take never on. heard that. Honestly, I've never heard that because now it's taken it from because I'm still able to enjoy it. I, I just have that ability. It doesn't matter. I'm still able to enjoy it. But at the same, after enjoying it once, I can watch it again and understand it at a deeper level. I can understand what they're doing, why they did these things in the ring, how they structured it, why they structured it that way. It's it made me appreciate it even more as a fan, which I I know that's it's a weird. A lot of people say that it ruins it for them, but it do, it doesn't for me. I, it, I enjoy it more. Tim, um, thing. you know, honestly. Uh, this is going to be a theme, but I'm playing off of Chris here. You know, like we're it's, a tag team. You two are so much alike that it's sickening. But it is not. sickening. It is scary. It is scary. It, when there's we times met each other. <laughs> there's times where we'll look at each other and be like, and we'll say the exact same thing at the same time, and it was like, well, this is this is why. This is why we are brothers. We are brothers. Yeah. But it's with Chris how he said, you know, being a professional wrestler made me just like professional wrestling more you know it's like understanding storylines a lot better understanding just match psychology a lot better there's times and there's times in matches i'll be like oh, let me mess that up i can just tell you know but like it, i think that's a thing that when you get in this business you can't stop right. like can't pointing out yeah but it's like storyline wise it's i just i haven't been caught up very much with wrestling like i think the last bit of wrestling media that i have paid attention to 
was when Brock Lesnar F5 Cody, you know, like that was. So it's at least recent. It wasn't like six yeah. months ago. It's yeah, yeah. something like yeah. that. But uh, I, I really pay attention to old school wrestling a lot more. Like I, I'll sit here in my living room and I'll just turn on the network and watch old ECW pay-per-views. Yeah, and yeah, Chris, right. will, Chris will get notifications on his phone of like 10 videos of me just commenting Every, on yeah. these matches. It's yeah, like, you've I want to be on. You've been big on old ECW recently. I, I've never gave it much attention until very recently, just because of the sheer amount of talent that their tag teams have. First and foremost, old EC, we're talking prior WWE ECW. Yes, yes, yes. yes. You guys weren't around. Let, let's just no. throw You guys were not around when... I was yeah, not born. No. Neither yeah, of us were either. born. Yeah. So to go back and watch that, that's that's awesome. You're right, because, uh, again, the Dudleys, Sabu and RVD, and uh, the franchise, and Bigelow and Candido, like, who are some that you're really transitioning and watching right now? Because ECW still doesn't get... It, we, there's a nut, a, a crazy nut... Um, what is the word I'm thinking of? Group that still loves it, it from Philly and all over, mm-hmm. but it still didn't make its way to California, and it wasn't national. It was very yeah. much us on Ohio, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York. You know, us were ECW over there. They didn't know it. So, who are you watching? Essentially, is what I'm mumbling to get to. Um, just like I hate to just bring up the Eliminators again. Just their Perry Saturn, Cronus, just absolutely freakishly athletic. They're big guys. I they're never realized how big. big guys. Yeah. Cronus can do like Cronus's finisher was a four fifty. Yeah. I can't think of another two hundred and sixty five pound guy today who can do a four fifty so clean and concise. There's um with tag teams, uh uh, wow, I'm just I'm blanking. Just incredible, Lance Storm. Just absolutely, Lance Storm is a fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see, there was BWO. I gotta love BWO as much as they get they get hated on for not being workers. I just they they just they absolutely have put without the love them of, a lot of storylines couldn't have continued though. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. With Raven, Tommy Dreamer, just all that. Like, they, they were a huge part of ECW in general. And whenever Steve uh, Stevie left, it just – it, it kind of went down. But got to love the Blue Meanie and Nova. Just Nova's a fantastic guy himself. Blue Meanie can take a mean-ass bump. I mean, he's just got to love them all. Have you guys ever met him – it, it, I have not. Awesome. He no. is an amazing human being. He'll he'll come at you. I, I've met him a couple times at cons and other shows that he does. He comes at you hard at first, and then you're thinking like, oh my god! And then it, he snaps like he's a goddamn lunatic and just laughs at you and he's like, <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. Like, he's a cool guy. I hope you guys get to meet him. I hope so too. Uh, he seems like a great guy. Well, for ECW, if we're gonna keep the ECW talk going on. Um... Outside of the tag, because he kind of mentioned all the tag teams already. Like uh, outside of the tag teams, it's I'm, it's RVD and Taz. Those are the two big ones, you know. Just that I, being a Japanese guy, is more on Taz side. Being a Japanese guy, I love those two, and even Taz. Just I love big or just strong dudes suplexing people, hitting them real hard. I I love those type big of wrestling. Meaty, you love big, big meaty, meaty, big meaty big men, men slapping slap meat, meat, slapping exactly. meat. My favorite types of wrestlers are like that, and it's, Taz is just—he's just so freak. Under, he's underrated. He's a freak. It's I crazy love that people haven't watched Prime Taz enough to just see how great he was. Even Prime RVD a little bit. Everyone sees WWE RVD, and he was great there. But ECW RVD, phenomenal. Kind of a—he's a different breed. He is a different breed. There's feuds in ECW that I would love to replicate one day, but just. In the tag team sense of like Mike Awesome, Masato Tanaka, me, me and Chris just gush over Mike Awesome all day, every day because re- rest in peace, Mike. Also awesome rest in peace. Yes. He's a he's a freak of nature. Another in the man doing best way. He should not have been doing. Exactly. Of course not. 
I just right. there's one clip that I always remember from ECW One Night Stand, the first one, is where Mike Awesome picks up Masato Tanaka, throws him over the top rope through a table, and he's Mas- Masato Tanaka is just laying there selling for a minute. The camera doesn't cut; it's just stuck on Tanaka, and all you see is Mike Awesome's six foot seven frame go over the top rope and a springboard <laughs> lands on him, and then they pin on the outside. Yeah. They're like, yeah. "Yeah, this is it. We're this is this is it. We're going home." Besides ECW, do you guys go back and watch anything like prior to Attitude Era or any anyone that was like WWE Classic or the New Era or anything? Uh, I mean. Guys like Bret Hart, Owen Hart, you know, those guys were – Bret Hart, Owen Hart, Sh- uh, Shawn Michaels were the big guys from that era that I consistently go back and watch a lot. Um, th- that WCW period too, you know, the classic Ric Flair matches. Uh, that was a little bit before that, but like yeah, still. Roughly, yeah. Yeah, Rick – there's this classic, like, the technical guys from WCW. The tech- That was a good period for technical wrestling. That was yes. when it was really at its big peak and then – those with Regal and Fit, Regal oh, yeah. and Fit family oh, just yeah, killing yeah. each other for uh, fifteen minutes. I do watch. This is more. Early, it's early nineties. It's uh, All Japan. Yep. I love All J- King's Road style. Is stuff I I can't consistently go back to. Those guys were beast. They were big meaty men slapping meat for fifty minutes every night, and it was amazing. And they just put on classic after classic after classic. And every it was the most stacked roster. I think in maybe wrestling history is that early nineties, all Japan when they had like the four pillars, Stan Hansen, Vader, all those guys, Gary Albright, who's like the most underrated wrestler at that time. Like the most underrated member of the Anawaii family, by the way. Yeah. Just, I he love is, that little notion. Yeah, he is he really is. Is. They're like, wait, he was part of that. Yeah. He yeah. Was. No, he was, he was part of it. Just, va- he was married in, but then again, he was just a humongous man. A- God rest English. Soul. Aiden English is the part Aiden of the Guerreros. <laughs> Who's also good. He's underrated. Stretching, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> how how did you, Chris, get so much on Japanese wrestling? Because listen, <laughs> where you are, it doesn't it's not knocking down the door. Like how did you find I know you're gonna say the internet, but how did you stumble what? upon it upon the internet or did a buddy show you or something? It was specifically the and the Okada Omega match at Wrestle Kingdom 11 back in 2017. Cause again, the internet talked about that match a lot. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's what? the only thing you saw for a year yeah, for a lot, for a long time. Uh, and it was just, I, that's like kicked the door, you know, it's just like, I, I saw that and I was like, whoa, what is, what is new Japan? I never really paid attention to this. And then I went from that. I watched that match. I was like, holy shit. This is amazing. Then I went from that match to just watching more New Japan matches. Then I heard about Noah, and then I watched mid two thousands Noah, and then it just kept kind of going backwards from there. I was like, "Oh, All Japan? Who's this Kenta Kobashi guy? I'm gonna go watch him." <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then and then I just jumped around everywhere from there. I was like, "Whoa, this is this is," and it's just up my alley. I just I love it. My favorite wrestler of all time is Hiroshi Tanahashi. That's an all right guy. He's he's all right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. I'm kidding. Hold on. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> hold on. Yeah, you guys both brought up the network a couple of times. What territory? Keep it in America, Chris. Keep it in America. I'll keep it in America. What territory could you see either combined? You guys work because I already have one in my head. I already have one in my head that I think you guys would have run a muck in, or if it was there. Uh, what territory do you think you would run amok in, or which one do you want to work in? What territory did you really love back in the day? Then I'll give you mine. I'm going to say Smoky. Smoky Mountain. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm, I'm reading your notes. We're, That's exactly Bobby, Bobby Blaze. Bobby, Bobby Blaze was there. He's trying to. You got to love uh, Fabulous Bodies. The Thrill Seekers got their start. Jericho, Lance Storm. It just absolutely stacked. It's just a huge amount of talent in Smoky Mountain. There was a lot in um, Florida Championship back uh, when it was still a territory, not developmental for WWE. Okay. Okay. But it was like what there was um, Magnum who was there, who was just mm-hmm. who I think that I, I guarantee he would still be working if not for the accident, like 100 percent. 
I do too. I do too. He, he would have. I'm not saying he would have taken over what Ric Flair is, but yeah. he would have knocked on the door really freaking close. Like he was, he had a rocket strapped to his ass. He really yeah. did. He was the guy. He was the guy. Yeah. Uh, another mention is Texas, you know, the Von Erichs free birds. That was the big one. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. Those guys. Just being a part of that mix would have been crazy. That would be crazy. God. Right. Yeah. Classic that's like, that. that's nuclear heat on either side. I mean, if you yeah. join either side, it's just going to be a pain in the ass, you know, in a good way. A pain in the ass in a good way. In a great way, yeah. And money just to be made. Just to be made. Exactly. <laughs> I can feel the dollars just <laughs> – <laughs> my pockets just growing. Do you think, and I'm a strong advocate for it, do you think the territories would work today? Oh, it's kind of, it's interesting because indie wrestling kind of is territories in a weird, in a interesting sort of way. It yeah. is. I yeah. think you have, let me jump in real quick. You Because down in like Tennessee, Kentucky, da, 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 you have that whole like OVW era. Yes. Up here, up here, there's there, there's three or four that kind of work together in Pennsylvania, so that's a little territory. Same thing over where you guys are. So there are little territories. I'd love to see like all of them massively come back together. Sorry, with, with yeah, with their big T, like with all the TV deals, and you get to yeah. just have more access to all that. Like the big thing with territories is each territory had like a really big star in it. Yes, you know. And at least one, at least one huge guy in every territory you can go back and look at it. And it's just like having that kind of spread out, like, I don't know, it having so many promotions all doing crazy and just so much wrestling. More wrestling is always a good thing. So I think territories would be amazing. <laughs> because yeah. everybody, could, everybody would have what they want. And there's just more opportunities for amazing wrestling to be shown on a large scale. And that's, yeah. I, I fully agree. I, it's like, with territories, I feel like it could work if it was done right. Mm-hmm. Right, you need the right people. Yeah, of in course. The ways. Yeah, you can't it's, have like Joe Blow running Florida and Georgia. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like we uh, there's definitely got to be a face, like uh, like not in the the working sense, like a face being we need somebody to base this around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like it was like uh, there's got to be a Dusty, there's got to be a Rick, there's got to be a Magnum, yeah. there's got to be a High Chief, you know. There's just, there's got to be that guy. Yeah, there's uh, yeah, the Von Eric, the yes. arrows as we transition over that side. Yeah, yeah. There, there's just there's got to be that that guy, that few people that just everybody's just these guys are wrestling gods. Look up to these guys. It's it's the their local gods is what I'm trying to get at without being them gods, you know, like right. I'd like to know the best advice you both got solely. Like somebody came up to you, Chris, and somebody came up to you, Tim, as we transition here a little bit more. Uh what was the best advice you got behind the curtain from if you want to give a shout out who gave it to you, that's cool. If not, if you want to keep it in your pocket, that's all right. But there's one advice that you both kinda like say, Holy hell. That has just changed me in wrestling. Uh, mine. Slow down and listen. You know, just keep your ears open to whatever. It's 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 listen to more advice. Always listen to advice. It's slow down. If someone says something, you take it and think about it. Don't just disregard it because you're like, oh, again, it comes back to the ego thing that I said earlier. It's just don't have an ego ever. Just. When someone says, here, you can do this better, think about what they're saying and say, okay, can I actually do this better? What do I need to do to do this better? And that's, yeah. Uh, For mine, I think it was just work the crowd. You know, either go out there and make them hate you or just walk out of the curtain and they'll just hate you. If they don't, if they don't boo you, this is just, I, I can't remember exactly who told me this. I just know that somebody symbiotic totally like told told me personally, <laughs> which is a weird kind of backwards thing to say, but no, it was it, mostly. It, it makes sense like cat crushers. It does. Yeah, <laughs> I, I promise you, I'm not inebriated. Um, 
I'm getting it. No. <laughs> <laughs> but they go, if you walk out of the curtain and they hate you, then make them hate you more. Yeah, you just you you've done your job. Now make them hate you more. Mm-hmm. And if if they start liking you, make them hate you. <laughs> and I hope they don't start liking you over this podcast because we need to make you heels again. <laughs> you guys are dirty son of a bitch and bastards that are sexier than all hell. But I'm going to spin this one more time. You have a little kid that is a bastard child that loves heels. And I'm saying this nicely. Uh, yes. The bastard child that loves heels from the age of six. And he gets you guys in the corner and says, I want to be like you guys when I grow up. What do you tell them? Because normally heels don't. You just tell the kid to go F off or something like that. (laughs) But listen, it's a day of you should at least take care of the youngers that want to be in wrestling now. Yeah. There is a Uh, story uh, that that is kind of along with this uh, message at the end of it. Uh, Our first big FTC show, we had done our match and it was intermission uh i think afterward and so we went out there with the heels that we had the heels on one side we had the faces on the other side just doing their thing selling their merchandise and we were just sitting there and these kids walk up to us and i go hey can you can you autograph our shirt (laughs) i go why yeah i can but just make sure you give it to your mom because I'm going to put my phone number on the back of it. <laughs> Classic. And it was just – there was there was a bunch of people. There was a bunch of kids to be just completely blatant, just trashing us. There was one specific kid, just one. <laughs> that was just tearing into us every chance he got, every time he looked at us. But – it was, it was, it was kind of like a humbling thing. It was like I know that either they're going to take this super seriously or they're not. So I'm going to give them what they want, but I'm going to do it in a dickish way. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it the way I want to do it. I don't exactly. want to do it the way that you want to do it. Maybe it's like sign my shirt. Okay, I'll put my phone number on the back of it. Can you take a picture with me? Sure. What's your mom's phone number? And <laughs> have her send it to me. You know, like. It's, it's just that, you know, I'll, we'll work the way that we work in the ring, you know, like, mm-hmm. I, I feel like working people in like just directly in front of you is a lot harder than working people while you're in the ring. You know, it's, you got to learn how to just talk to people and work people like that, even if they're not, you know, fully people yet, like they're kids. So you just make fun of kids. That's the yeah. best thing too. It, it really- is. I mean, I, I hate to say the kids are <laughs> easy to target in professional wrestling, but mm-hmm. they are. Yeah. And if anybody takes it to heart, a kid does. If you make a kid yeah. cry, whew, whew, I'm doing cool. my job right. Right. Mm-hmm. You took him to a wrestling show. Yeah. <laughs> you're the bad parent. Yeah, yeah, you're the bad parent. Keep coming, though. Keep spending your money. Keep coming. Keep coming. Yeah, of course. Exactly. Keep coming to get my ass kicked. <laughs> So what's on the docket for you guys here in the near future? Uh, how much more are you going to beat up Brock and Titan and the rest of the organization? What what match do you have come up? Promote yourself that. Um, do you have merch? Where can we buy merch? Da, 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 da. All of that. Give your socials. Well, here, I'll give you my socials. Mainly you can find us both on Facebook. Look us up. You can. It's, you know our names. Chris Ringrose, Timothy Flowers. Look us Love up on boy. Facebook. Timothy that's Flowers, our primary. That's our primary social media. I have an Instagram. You can just look up my name as well. I also we don't, have an Instagram. We don't have so. merch, and we don't know what our next match is. Hopefully, it is getting to beat up Brox and Troy more, or just anybody really. I don't. Really, I, it doesn't matter. We'll beat them up. Uh, mm-hmm. Look damn good doing it. I've been working on a logo, so I've so working on it. Especially mm-hmm. once school done, I'll definitely have that done, and we'll. Figure that out from there. And then we'll probably get some merch out from there. Look at you slacking. We need to get money, I'm not Chris. slacking. I'm not slacking. 
The sexy, the sexy ass ring got to be smart. Tension, tension. The school thing's getting in your way of professional wrestling, Chris. I think you need to drop out or something. No, I'm kidding. Do not. <laughs> I got a scholarship. Any, I, I any kids listening to this, make sure you go to school, graduate, do all that stuff. Do not drop out of school. Jesus Christ, Mark. <laughs> um, what, did I did I forget anything? Do you guys want to bring anything else up? What what else do you want to talk about? Uh-huh. I'm not sure anything that. Anything you want to talk about? Yeah, anything, honestly, you have in mind, uh, we're all ears and all mouths. So, I mean. Well, let's transition a little bit to, uh, because I, I'm a huge AEW fan right now. I, I really am. How much AEW do you like? What what do you like going on in AEW? And, I, again, I said, you know, that should be one of your steps, you know, pushing yourself to dark or something. You know, how – how are you going to get there? What storylines? All of that. You know, let's just talk AEW. What do you like? Uh, well, obviously the elite and everything going on with those guys. I mean, they're just, I think they're all amazing. Quite frankly, I think they're all good. Like fantastic storytellers, fantastic wrestlers. Again, that comes from the Japan love. Okay. Yep. And those guys carried over and a lot of that is there. I mean, MJF. I mean, who doesn't? Just look at MJF and say, man, that man's good at what he does. Uh, Do you you think he drops the title to one of the other pillars soon? No. I think MJF holds it a while, to be honest. I don't know. I don't want to say that. I don't want to say the other pillars are not ready for it. uh, We've said it a million times on the show, so you can jump on board on that. Okay. Then I will jump on board. You know what? I I don't think they're ready. I. I'm not a, I'm not huge on Jungle Boy and Sammy. I love Darby Allen. I think he's insane in the best way possible for a wrestler to be insane. But probably not world title yet. I I think he better be a world champion at some point, in my opinion. Because I at think some he, point, yes. at some point, not yet, not yet, but at some all, point, all of them I think will have a case at some point. And I think Jungle's the last of them. Yeah, I I can agree with yeah. that. Jungle Boy, I mean, I there's a lot of people that I, I'm friends with that watch wrestling, and they just go, I just I can't see the appeal, you know, like I can't I can't see what everybody is into him for. He's just he seems just generic white meat baby face, but I just he he's makes, he's a great worker. He he's a shtick though right now because of the song. I, like he needs to drop. He just needs to be Jack Perry and be yeah badass yeah. essentially. Because mm-hmm. we, Pittsburgh last week when we were all dynamites, we all sang for him. But once he, the match started, they were like, "All right, yeah, now yeah. what?" I just what do, you, what do you guys like on the the women's side uh, across the board on anything? Because we're huge advocates on. I, I love the word advocate by the way today. I don't know why, but we're huge advocates on here on women's wrestling. I'll bring it to New Japan right out the bat. I love what Mercedes Monet is doing. I can't yes. wait till she gets back stateside and does crazy shit over here. Yes. But still a Brit fan. Wish Thunder would get her shit together and her back straight. And she comes mm-hmm. back because I think they carried AEW in the pandemic term. Yes. Um, I want Bailey out of WWE so she can do more. Like, yeah, exactly. where are you guys going with the women? Uh, I mean, for WWE, I think the big thing for me. Is WWE has so many underutilized talents in the women's division, in my opinion. Just EO Sky is way too good. Uh, Bailey's way too good. I think I, as as much as I love Trish, I don't think Rhea should be. I don't think or who's she feuding with now. I don't even remember. Trish, Trish I think she's Becky. 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 And still, I don't think Trish should be in a big. I, she's. That's a SummerSlam she, match coming up. We know that, right? Yeah. 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 I don't know. It's just like those guys. You have some of the best talent in the world, and they can clearly showcase they're some of the best talent in the world. Look at WrestleMania, the two excellent women matches that ha- took place there. They oh, should fantastic. be. It should. It should be those. Like there should, like, should be like six women's wrestlers, like Charlotte, Rhea, Bianca, Io Sky, Bailey, Becky. Those guys, they should just be wrestling each other forever and just putting on excellent matches all the time. But not sometimes they just get muddled in weird feuds Horrible. and storylines. Horrible story. Lita, like. Lita yeah. being a tag team champ. Like, what? Is, I it, I love it, Lita, and I love yeah. Lita. Not not in twenty twenty three. Not in it's it's one of those things where it's just like uh, I I it's like the one promo that I've 
have paid attention to that Trish has put out is, you know, she goes, I am not a nostalgia act. And I'm like, I, I hate to, I hate to like burst the bubble. I, Trish is by far, if not the most successful, well, not like successful, but most influential. That's the word I'm looking for. Most influential women's wrestler to come from that era of just women's wrestling. You know, it was like. Of brawn panties. Yeah, of brawn panties. Exactly. Yeah. It was mostly just that. And I mean, what, the first ever women's main event on Raw was Lita and Trish for mm-hmm. the title. And it was a fantastic match. But that was what, oh five? Twenty years. Let's round. Yeah, yeah, around twenty years ago. And I just I get it that these women are very influential, like Lita, like Trish, but just I think we need more of the new breed to come in. And I, I it's weird to call Becky, Charlotte, Bianca new breed. I mean, they're just, they've been here for a long time. They're all fantastic. I'm not trashing them in any way, any shape, any form. They are all some of the most talented athletes in the world. And it's like, I think we just need fresh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. Because, I mean, just look at Rhea and Charlotte at WrestleMania. That was by far the match of the weekend for me. Match of the. I th- definitely match the night for that night specifically. It was just, it was a fantastic moment for Rhea being heel. Apparent, like for being in a heel faction, being the best face out of that faction, <laughs> and it's- Charlotte coming out, just the biggest heel in women's wrestling. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't, I don't know how to explain it either because it's like Rhea is fantastic by far just one of the top tier stars that WWE has today Mm -hmm. agreed and she needs her time in the spotlight and I feel like I I don't know how to explain it I just I really don't I really don't I just I I think she needs to run ride solo and kind of get away from Judgment Day and run a yeah. block through the division. Mm-hmm. It, it needs to be a long title reign for her. Deservedly so. and just so. show what she can do. Mm-hmm. She can just uh, power through the entire division. Even people they can call up. Yeah. There's just people in NXT that are they're they're beyond ready to come up to the main roster and the, but there's they're going to get lost in the shuffle. And exactly. I, 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 will, I will so say Gigi and um JC Jane, I, I'm ready for them to come up. Yeah. They're not going to be – listen, we we almost need we, – we might get some heat here. We <laughs> almost need a little bit of retiring from maybe the four horsewomen. And I'm not saying we want Charlotte out or anybody like that, but – A little bit less focused. Transition here. them to legends role, essentially. Yeah. Yeah, I get you. It's yeah. like, what, like, what, like what John Cena is doing. I'm not going to say that John Cena is like – yeah, I, I don't know. It's just just less focus away from them, more on these more yeah. up and coming. Rhea the up Bianca. and coming people. You have Rhea and Bianca. You should you could build a promotion around those two. Honestly, yeah, yeah. yeah. And those with Oscar, Oscar's definitely just Oscar there right now. Oscar's fantastic. She's one of Oscar's fantastic. Io Sky's fantastic. I think she's one of the best female wrestlers on the planet right now. And she doesn't have the proper, um, what's that word? The proper way to show it. She doesn't have a storyline. Yeah, yeah, she doesn't have a storyline. She's just she been storyline right now. She's just lost in the shuffle, like you said, with Dakota Kai, who is also just fantastic. It's just there's so many storylines happening at once that I think it's really slowing everything down. Yeah, that's it's weird. Too many on a roster can hurt that. Yeah. 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 I think it's just, it's too many and then underutilizing the ones that you should be using and it's this whole thing. I agree. It's just it's just one big Shouts out cluster. to Jamie Hader though. 
Yeah. Like uh, yeah. We never mentioned her name when the AEW came up. We, we should have. Yeah, she's just freaking champion. She's it, 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 the division right now. Cargill, me. too. I will throw oh, yes. You know? Yeah. It's Who's the person to the main, the main focus of, of wrestling, too, instead of just beating up Red Velvet and Anna Jay and all those again? She needs to step it up to the main part of the show. Yeah. Yeah. You know, That's all just, I really got. I, yeah, I, okay. I mean, we, we, can, we can talk forever, probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Talk wrestling and I mean, I want to invite you guys back on whenever you guys want to come back on. Always, always welcome to come back on. Whenever, whenever we're va- you're available, we'll be here. Talk, talk wrestling. Talk about winning these tag titles. Talk about running amok. Uh, wherever you guys go, bringing up the seduction section. I'm getting ten percent of that, by the way. Okay, okay, got you. Bringing up the seduction section. Just send me the papers. I will. We'll sign I'll up. I'll rip them up. Okay. You got Mark Sterling as your lawyer, right? <laughs> yeah. Guys, sure I can get him. It, it's been a blast. I thank you for stopping by. Thank you. Thank, thank you for having me. us on. It, it's been a blast to be here. Mm-hmm. I'm lover boy Timothy Flowers. And I'm Dash and Chris Ringrose. And we are the sexiest tag team professional wrestling, the Brothers of Seduction. And you're listening to the Can Crushers podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, I told you, seductive, sexy, and everything in between the brothers of seduction. What a wonderful interview with these two young men. Ah, I, I, they're already invited back. They, they can come on and back and talk wrestling whenever they want. Lover boy, Timothy Flowers, Dashing Christopher Ringrose. Man, the knowledge they have, first and foremost, of wrestling is cool. We could just sit down and talk wrestling. We don't have to talk about them. We don't have to talk about me. We definitely don't have to talk about Brock's or Titan at all. We can just talk wrestling and and be really cool and just have a wonderful show for you talking tag team wrestling. Maybe that's a thing. Maybe I come back and we just rip down tag teams with the Brothers of Seduction because that would be so much fun. Just their strengths and weaknesses and yeah, uh, I'd bring some old, old school ones in that they don't know about when they weren't born yet. We we'll talk about some New Japan stuff. Man, this was fun. I, I love the interaction between both of them, the whole interview, because you just found out about them. You just know what make them tick and why they love this business so much. And man, they both got great heads on their shoulder. They really do. Um, knowing the politics and egos don't fit into professional wrestling. That's really cool. And their goals. I love their goals are, we've heard it from a couple other people um, a couple months ago, that Rome wasn't built in a day. So baby steps for them, for the Brothers of Seduction, because they know, okay, take over one territory, then get this whole seduction section going, and then move along. I really do think this is going to be a team in the next, you know, six months to a year, year and a half. You're going to see them pop up on Dark, and that's going to be so cool because they're good. They really are. And the things that they do, yeah, I I love them. Oh, man, we could have talked so much more wrestling. But again, we keep these about an hour, hour and a half or so to want you to want more, to be more seductive with the brothers. So... Timothy, Chris, thanks again for coming on the show. It was a blast. We'll schedule again. Guys, remember, just because you're trash doesn't mean you can't do great things. It's called a garbage can, not a garbage cannot. Make sure you tell your loved ones you love them, because you never know. (laughs) 